Kobe Bryant is one of the most iconic figures in the history of American sports. A former regular season MVP, multiple All-NBA teams and All-Defensive teams, a two-time Finals MVP, and a five-time NBA champion. That resume is not only proof that he is an obvious first ballot Hall of Famer, but he is also one of the 10 greatest players in the history of basketball. And though Kobe is not with us anymore, he is still with us in spirit and to celebrate his legacy on Mamba Day, I decided to make a video talking about why we love Kobe Bryant going over some of the greatest moments of his career. I wish you all a happy Mamba Day and happy belated birthday to the late great Kobe Bryant as well as it was yesterday. But without further ado, let's get started with this video and talk about one of the moments that I admire the most about Kobe Bryant's career and that is the Game 7 performance against the Portland Trailblazers. As heading into this season, series and the playoffs as a whole, there were a lot of expectations on Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal that were very dependent on that series against the Blazers. Of course, in the Eastern Conference, you had the Indiana Pacers, who were incredible in the 2000 NBA season, but let's be real, the winners of the NBA championship that year were going to come out of the Western Conference. And after dispatching of the Kings and Phoenix Suns in rounds one and two, they were met with their toughest challenge yet of facing the Portland Trail Blazers who were nicknamed the Portland Jail Blazers for having one of the greatest defenses in the NBA. Being led by some of the greatest defenders of all time in Rasheed Wallace and Scottie Pippen, going up against these guys was not going to be an easy task for Kobe Bryant. And after back-to-back -back seasons of being swept in the playoffs, the Shaq and Kobe experiment didn't look too great to start things off. And in a season where you have peak Shaquille O'Neal in his lone MVP season, you just can't mess up that opportunity especially considering that they were not only one of the best teams in the league but one of the greatest teams of all time winning 67 games. Many people favored the Lakers in this series and thought they would dispose of them in about five or six games but unfortunately it went seven games. It even got to the point that the Lakers were on the verge of blowing a 3-1 lead after suspect performances from Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal in games five and six. So you could say going into game seven was probably the most pressure that Kobe Bryant had ever felt at this point in his basketball life. If they lose this game, the Shaq and Kobe duo ceases to exist as we know it, and Kobe Bryant is probably being traded from Los Angeles because you're not moving peak Shaquille O'Neal. But thankfully in Game 7, Kobe Bryant rose to the occasion. With an incredible stat line of 25 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, 4 blocks on 47% shooting from the field, Kobe stepped up in a must-win situation for the Lakers and was the best player on the court for both teams. He dominated on the boards as he led both teams in rebounding. He got consistent buckets when needed be with nine points in the fourth quarter and his playmaking was sensational in that game as we all know the iconic dagger lob from Kobe to Shaq at the end of the game in the fourth quarter. Shaq and Kobe would then go on to defeat the Indiana Pacers in the NBA Finals capturing their first of three consecutive NBA championships. Another moment about Kobe Bryant's career in which he defied all the odds was his 2006 NBA season, a year in which Kobe had one of the greatest offensive seasons in NBA history. Averaging 35 points a game along with nearly 5 assists and 5 rebounds, nearly 2 steals on 45% shooting from the field, 35% from 3 on nearly 7 attempts a game, and 85% shooting at the free throw line. Kobe would lead the league in scoring and had some of the most iconic performances in NBA history that season. He had 27 games with at least 40 points or more. He had 6 games with at least 50 points points or more. He once had a week in April where he had two 50-point games, and in the month of January, he went on a scoring flurry, averaging 43 points a game on 47% shooting from the field, 40% from three, and 90% at the free throw line. Last but not least, we cannot forget the iconic performance against the Toronto Raptors where he dropped 81 points, which is the most points in an NBA game outside of segregation basketball with Wilt Chamberlain dropping 100 points, which I doubt even really happened, let's be honest here. Kobe was so sensational in the 06 NBA season that a lot of people believe to this day that he was robbed of an MVP. And though in the playoffs he did lose by blowing a 3-1 lead, ironically, to the MVP and Steve Nash and the Phoenix Suns, he would have some pretty iconic moments in NBA history in that series. Not only did he have the 
the dunk on Steve Nash where he hung on the rim and some people think that's revenge for Steve Nash stealing his MVP. But he also had the game winning shot at the buzzer to give them the 3-1 lead in game 4. One of the reasons why this season was so iconic for Kobe Bryant's career is not just due to the fact that he had an incredible season statistically, but also because of the narrative that was around Kobe Bryant at the time. Because after the split of Kobe and Shaq, many people were saying Kobe didn't look like a true leader in the 2005 NBA season. Because due to an injury combined with some subpar play, the Lakers would miss out on the playoffs. But in the 2006 NBA season, he redeemed himself by proving that he was not only capable of putting up historic numbers on a playoff team, but he was also capable of carrying the load of subpar talent on his back. But despite the historic scoring season, there were still question marks about Kobe Bryant's leadership, especially leading a team to a championship. Because it's one thing to lead a team to the playoffs, but winning a championship is a whole different situation and Kobe had not done that without Shaquille O'Neal. And considering that Shaq was able to extend his dominance to Miami for a couple of seasons that resulted in a championship for him, it only added fuel to the fire. And in the mid 2000s, Kobe went through some rough times. I mean, he was putting up some historical scoring numbers, as I mentioned earlier, led the league in scoring in back to back seasons. But unfortunately, because he was playing with some pretty shitty teammates like Kwame Brown and Smush Parker, the results were the same first round exits in back to back seasons. And after things got a little bit ugly, Kobe Bryant demanded a trade, and the NBA world was stunned. How could Kobe Bryant leave Los Angeles? It seemed like he was going to be a Laker for life. Thankfully, though, the Lakers were able to pull off a very good deal by getting Pau Gasol from the Memphis Grizzlies to cool down Kobe Bryant's tensions of leaving Los Angeles. And with a roster that featured a top five player in Kobe Bryant, a second star in Pau Gasol, depth with players like Lamar Odom and Derek Eric Fisher, the Lakers were not only the champions of the Western Conference, but Kobe Bryant was awarded with his first ever MVP award for leading them throughout the regular season. Unfortunately though, when they got to the finals, Kobe Bryant stunk it up and had one of his worst finals performances of his career. Kobe averaged 26 points a game, but shot 40% from the field and 32% from three, along with nearly four turnovers a game. And just like that, the Kobe needed Shaq narrative was formed yet again, as this time Kobe couldn't use the excuse of not having help. You have Pau Gasol right there and no matter what you say, you underperformed in the big moments of that series, especially in the elimination game 6. A game that was do or die for your legacy, you got blown off the court by nearly 40 points. So it's safe to say that as great as Kobe Bryant was in that season, even capturing an MVP leading them to the finals, the expectation was championship or bust going into every season following that one. And in the 09 season, the Lakers yet again had a great regular season and even better one than the year prior winning 65 games and come playoff time Kobe Bryant takes it up another notch averaging 30 points throughout the entire postseason on 46 35 and 88 shooting splits they would reach the NBA finals in back-to-back -back seasons and Kobe would have the finals moment of his life he torched the Orlando Magic and had the best finals performances of his career as he averaged 32 points a game along with seven assists and six rebounds, a steal and a half, a block and a half on 43, 36, and 84 shooting splits. But unfortunately, that just wasn't enough. Not only was Kobe not satisfied, but the NBA community as a whole wasn't satisfied. Because Kobe Bryant is not just known to settle. His goal is to exceed all expectations with the quote unquote Mamba mentality. And that's exactly what he did. As the next season, the Lakers were able to run it back, this time getting Ron Artest in the offseason. And once again, thanks to the great play of Kobe Bryant leading them and good performances from the supporting cast and players like Pau Gasol, Lamar Odom, Trevor Ariza. Meta World Peace, Derek Fisher, they were not only able to get back to the NBA Finals in a rematch against the Boston Celtics Big 3 of Paul Pierce, KG, and Ray Allen, but this time they were able to pull off the W with Kobe Bryant cementing his legacy in NBA history as a five-time champion. And though he never did reach that mountaintop again after 2010, it was fine because his legacy was already stamped. He won back-to-back -back championships and he did it without Shaquille 
Shaquille O'Neal as the clear cut best player on the team. It really doesn't get much better than that for Kobe Bryant. So as I celebrate Mamba Day as many others around the world and especially in America, I truly wanted to be known that Kobe Bryant not only had the mentality to dominate his opponents on the court, but he was consistently able to reach expectations and in some cases even supersede them. His will, determination, the grind, the hustle, every single positive quality that you could apply to a basketball player Kobe Bryant had it all and it translated in so many different ways whether it was him being elite on both ends for so long in his career having historic scoring seasons like in 2006 being arguably the greatest Robin in NBA history to Shaquille O'Neal in the early 2000s and then cementing himself going back to back in 2009 and 2010 if there's anything I've learned from Kobe Bryant it's that you should aim high and make sure your end results are even higher all right RIP to the Mamba and happy Mamba day to everyone out there. But before I wrap up this video, I want to give a shout out to the Discord link down below in the description box. For those who don't know, me and my boys at Hoop Concessions, we have our own Discord. We interact about numerous topics, primarily being basketball related. We've had some football arguments in there and with the season coming up, you don't want to miss out on those. Make sure you click on the link down below in the description box and in the pinned comment to join the Discord. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on that opportunity but that concludes this video you guys make sure you drop a like subscribe to the channel press that bell for post notifications and follow me on social media the links are down below in the description box this is your boy young mustard signing out you guys stay safe and have a blessed day peace